up to the Supercar Ranch, and in this video, it's just going to be me talking about something that has uh, come in the news lately. So the C8 Corvette, some of you guys may be following that. If you know, I have a 2005 Corvette, a C6. Um, I've also really been watching the C8 uh, news coming out on the forum or, or somewhere else on the internet, and it's been really interesting to watch. Um, knowing that I also have that Ford GT and the mid-engine American car that it is, being able to see what they're doing with the Corvette, I'm interested in it, right? How is it going to compare to the uh, to the Cor or to the Ford GT? Is it going to be in any way comparable to the Ford GT? So, a um, couple things worth worth talking about is a couple months ago there were some pictures that leaked of the interior. Um, I actually really liked it. I, I, it, was, it was very futuristic looking. It looks like they're actually intentionally trying to make this car different and, and world class. Uh, they're, they're no longer just trying to make it look like a luxurious Chevy. Um, so it, it is up there with you know the interiors that I think Porsche and Mercedes are, are, and those kinds of brands are making. Um, I think the C7 was a great new interior, but they had a few things that I thought were pretty cheap, like the uh, infotainment system was just plugged in from a Yukon, and it just did looked out of place. Um, a lot of other things I, I wasn't, was, didn't really love that much, although I did like how they did cover different parts of the interior in leather and carbon fiber, and they tried to make it an, uh, an impression there. The new C8 interior, I think, looks a whole lot better. I was really impressed. The other thing that came out here in the last couple days is the a couple of leaked pictures of the ordering guide for the C8. It was originally leaked on Jalopnik's website, um, and you know, compared to the pictures of the interior, with with this leak, I, I was actually not very impressed. You know, um, so first of all, I, I really believe that with the new version of the C uh, or the Corvette coming out, the C8, I really think there's going to be a front engine iteration of this car. I think a lot of people think that they're just going to throw this the front engine, rear wheel drive platform, throw it in the garbage and start over. I I don't personally see them building a mid-engine dual clutch transmission supercar and pricing it at fifty to sixty thousand dollars. I don't I don't see that happening. Um, you know if you if I'm gonna again compare it to the Ford GT that starts at five hundred thousand dollars. Um, even if you compare it against other cars like the NSX or the R8 that are, they start in, I don't know, $150,000 to $200,000. I don't see them pricing something like that in the 50s and 60s. So I actually believe that the base version of the C8 will also be a front engine car. They might actually release the mid engine Zora first and then one or two years later release the C8 version of the front engine car. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to do that, but the fact that we've only seen leaked pictures of the mid-engine leads me to believe they might do something like that. I don't know if they'll actually refer to the mid-engine car as a C8 because of that. So one of the things that kind of let me down here recently was the ordering guide leaks that came out. And even though I say that it kind of let me down, it actually might have just reaffirmed what I just said about there being a front engine version of the car. And sorry, I'm looking over here where I actually have the, the uh, picked copies of the, um, the leaked guides uh, displayed. I was actually let down because so much of it just looks like you're ordering a C6 or you're ordering a C7 or hell, even a C5. Some of these options, um, it just looks like you're ordering some car that is many, many years old. Um, I remember when the first order guides came out for the C7, I had the same feeling. I was let down. I said, now's your opportunity to really change the game here, offer some new exciting colors, offer some new exciting interiors. And I'll be honest, I was I was let down then. My The thing I loved about the most back in 2013 when they first talked about that was some of the interior colors. The thing I like most about this is the same thing, just some of the interior colors. Other than that, I, I'm, I'm not that impressed. Uh, it does show that there's a dual clutch transmission. It also shows that's the only option. Um, I, I still think that's a little bit of a mistake on Chevy's side. There are still so many manual transmission cars ordered in the Corvette. I'm sure, again, they know what they're doing. They've done their research and 
Um, it, it doesn't completely surprise me they'll do that. They'll move to 100% DCT, but I'm surprised they're doing it now. Um, really, the only thing on here that, that gets me excited is a couple of those interiors. I think the, the nice red interior could be could be nice. They have a couple of other um, wheel options, like they have a carbon flash wheel option, but they don't have a black wheel option. Uh, that surprised me. Um, the black wheels are still kind of in right now and surprising. They also don't have a carbon fiber wheel option, uh, especially if this is, again, the $150,000 plus C8 mid-engine Corvette, and they don't even have an option for a carbon fiber wheel. Again, with a $50,000, actually, I guess the R is, you know, $75,000 Shelby GT350R has that option, and it's it's a, becoming a bigger option in other supercars. Why would that not be uh, one of the options? The actual spec'd out version of a car that was printed out here, 20, it says 2020, that I actually kind of laughed a little bit because I don't know if too many other people really noticed it, but it is a Accelerate yellow exterior car with a Morello red interior. I don't know if Ronald McDonald is ordering this car or if it's some other type of pace car for the McDonald's organization, but I don't know too many people that are ordering a yellow car with a red interior. So in a way that almost makes me feel like this is fake, but I also I think it, I think it looks real, uh, at least as a demo or a um, some sort of a uh, a uh, car that would just be used for promotional purposes, something like that. I really like the concept of the GT2 seats, assuming that it takes the competition seat up to the next level. That's, again, the interior thing that I really like. It's got the digital uh, readout on the front. It's got all the other things that you came to expect from all the other news that's come out. But, you know, a lot of the other things that, that it's got the, on the rest of that spec sheet just looks really simple. I mean, you know, Z51, it's got XM radio, it's got uh, a Bose system. I mean, it really just reads out like I'm actually specking out almost a 2000... 11 or 2012 C6 um, Corvette. It, it doesn't really seem that substantial of a change. Um, the only thing on here that I do see that looks a little interesting is that the Z51 actually includes the magnetic shocks, uh, magnetic, or so magnetic selective ride control. When I know in the C5, C6s and I believe in all the C7s, that was a separate option. Um, I think an F55 option. So. Uh, that's kind of cool that, that the Z51 now includes that, not just the stiffer com competition springs uh, like it had in the past. It's got the same dual roof, so that means it's going to have a Targa roof again. Um, but is the mid-engine going to have a Targa roof, or is that going to be just on a front-engine uh, car, and then the mid-engine is going to be just a coupe for now? Uh, I think that their intent is to build the C, the mid-engine with a Targa roof because that's also become a staple of the Corvette is to have that Targa roof over the last many generations. So um, overall, I would say I'm I'm impressed with the fact that that we're actually getting some information coming out about this car with the interior pictures, all the spy photos, um, and uh, and this now this spec sheet and build sheet and these build options uh, that Jalopnik found. But overall, I'm not that impressed with. What I found in these spec sheets. I'm I'm hoping that what we're looking at is actually some of the spec sheets for the front engine C8 Corvette for 2020, um, or it may be a updated version of the C7 with some newer options that may also be shared with the mid-engine car. Because uh, nowhere on this sheet does it specify the words you know the word C8, although they didn't necessarily call it that in um in in gm but um that's just kind of what it's called by uh, us other people that are on the internet and, and fans of it so it could be a updated version of a c7 with a few new options it could be a front engine c8 a whole new model um, or this could be the list for the actual c8 mid-engine supercar that everyone's really really hoping for Either way, I'm excited that it comes out. I'm a little disappointed that we didn't see any real 
game changer options or, or specs coming out on this car. Uh, again, it just has a 6.2 engine. It's just basically the same engine. They're calling LT2 instead of an LT1, but it's the same same engine. Nothing crazy there. Um, so I'm interested to see how it is. I'm interested to drive one. I'm interested to compare it against the C6. I'm interested to compare it against the Ford GT. Uh, don't expect it to be 650 horsepower uh, base model or anything like that. Although I've read some interesting news about the higher end model of the uh, mid-engine. Uh, they said something about um, having to do more research on the power, uh, bending the frames. I think that was a little bit of a um, diversion tactic by, by GM actually. Uh, a, I don't know if that's actually happening. B, uh, they apparently had some other issues with the model of this new Corvette, and so they have delayed its release until uh, later this year. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a 2021 model by the time it's all said and done. Nothing's been released to the public, and here we are uh, almost in April. So I think the last chance that it gets uh, released to the public is at the uh, Corvette bash at the museum in April. Um, I don't really expect that because it's usually not released there. A lot of times they'll release the uh, the car at the uh, North American Auto Show and then they'll first uh, have a, an appearance maybe at the bash in April, three months after that initial release. That didn't happen there. Didn't happen in Geneva. A lot of people thought it might have gotten released in Geneva because uh, that's where a lot of the European supercars are. It did not. So here we are almost April, almost at the bash, and no news. So I would not be surprised if some of these delays may have it go into next year. Maybe uh, it gets released in next year's North American Auto Show for an early release and then uh, produced early on in the year for a 2020 model. Plus, they have a lot of C7s apparently just hanging out on Corvette or on uh, Chevy lots just waiting to be sold. That happened also with the C6 back in 2013. It's never going to not happen anytime they come up with a new model, but every time there's that, the year before a new model is released, everyone's anticipating a similarly priced new model. Why in the world would I buy the one sitting on the lot? So those are the many problems delaying this whole thing. Um, feel free to add a comment about your thoughts on the C8, your thoughts on whether or not there's going to be a front engine or if it's just going to be all mid-engine. Uh, right now, it's again all speculation, but this is my opinion of it, and the things that I've seen online uh, have led me to believe a few things. But leave a comment, subscribe if you want. We'll have more Corvette content, more 4GT content, more other content for other supercars, and um, there's going to be more to come. Uh, right now, I'm traveling, so that's why I'm sitting here making a video of myself <laughs> driving any cars, uh, but hopefully I'll have some other content for the 4GT and the Corvette up soon. Uh, feel free to... Uh, shoot me uh, anything that maybe you would want to see in a new video. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm not going to I'm not going to do any a bunch of donuts in the GT, but uh, if you want to see any cool features of those two cars, um, you want me to show something about uh, the GT that, that maybe no one knows about, just ask me and I can make that video. Anyway, until next time, see you later.